I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, March the 28th, brought to you in part by Safeguard. Deworm your cattle your way, either at the chute, in the pasture, or add it to their feed. Wherever Safeguard is given, it goes to work, guaranteed. For more information, go to safeguardworks.com. Also, Beaver County Stockyards. Another good run for them from 3,000, probably closer to 3,500. Uh, Going to have 1,000, 1,200, maybe more calves there. Uh, most of them weighing four to six, but they are going to have about 100 head of peewee calves. I mean like two and three weight calves that are hard as rocks. Where are you going to find them? What will they bring? But if you want to, to get online and, and bid on them, go to dvauction.com. Call them ahead, tell them you're interested in bidding, they'll get you approved. They've also got uh, nearly 100, about 85 head of Holstein uh, steers and heifers, both. Uh, they're, they're selling them for the insurance, come uh, out of a truck wreck here a few weeks ago. Uh, but they've got the ones that are hurt and stuff pulled off. The other ones are looking really nice. Uh, they're going to sell at a discount, and you guys could be the ones uh, to get that discount and buy those cattle worth the money. How about some yearlings, maybe 2,000 yearlings, uh, be at least 15 truckload lots uh, scattered between eight and nine weight steers and six and seven weight heifers. Uh, it be a pretty nice uh, deal there. And if you guys are interested in checking that sale out, Beaver County Stockyards, dvauction.com. New life for this cattle market and you guys have listened to me for the last three weeks or so and I've been really frustrated with the board because the board is not uh, supportive at all the board causes some of these uh, negotiated sellers to be basis jumpers uh, it stunted the rally we had in the cash fat cattle market which was very frustrating because it felt like we were going for all time new highs there and should and I think that we still will uh, you know, I had people calling me out uh, telling me uh, I shouldn't be so bullish all the time because it's uh, uh, irresponsible and things like that because people listen to me and I shouldn't be uh, getting their hopes up and all that kind of thing. It's supply and demand, stupid. And we've got really, really tight supplies and we've got really, really good demand. So what happens? Uh, the, the market's going to go up and, and it's definitely going to do that. We finally saw the board show some life on Monday. It was actually Friday, and I'm not a techie guy, but uh, uh, the board, even though it was just moderately higher, it technically showed strength. And and uh, you know, and that's what it really takes to get some of those traders in there. They don't know or care anything about the fundamentals. Uh, it's just about the squiggly lines on the graph. And there was some good strength showed on Friday. And then Monday, it gave things life. Uh, the way these algorithms go now, you get some orders in there and it starts rolling and it rolls way up. And we were the benefactors of that on Monday. Uh, now, I think that, that uh, it, it has already given the market uh, a shot of B12. And I think we'll probably uh, uh, see your fat cattle market be higher this week. Feeder cattle market already higher. They're just waiting on a little bit of support from this board. Now, granted, the board could be down more than it was up on Monday here on Tuesday. It could be down that much. That's why I say you can't really trust the board as a market. But when it's just consistently holding the, the cash market back all the time, it's very, very frustrating. But uh, Shiley finally so, showed some signs of life. And I think that's going to help uh, uh, some, some people that might want to invest in the board. Going to help some people that want to invest in some cattle. Uh, like I said, I think it's going to give new life to our market here. Your packers have been very disciplined of late. Uh, they need cattle. They're short bought. Uh, they've exhausted their captive supplies for this month, but we're moving into April. That's going to give them another week or two uh, to kind of, uh, you know, pull those. But they've been really disciplined and they've been holding back their slaughter levels. And with the carcass weight so light, they were up a few pounds, but still running nearly 10,000 head light on the harvest that we are seeing each week because the carcass weights are so light. 
So, you know, how have the Packers been able to do that? They've just been real disciplined in holding back. They wanted to stop that runaway market that we had here uh, three weeks ago or so that just they were gave, giving up buck two, three every week. They've done that here for two or three weeks. They've held this market back. Now you watch, they're going to get aggressive here. Uh, they're going to they're going to hold back a little bit. They've been trying to buy cattle with time and having pretty decent luck at it. Uh, but guys keep giving in. They they tell them, oh no, we don't need any cattle for this week or next week. My ass, they don't need cattle. They're buying cattle in the sale barns and everywhere else to fill their immediate needs. But they're they can't, oh well well we'll buy some for the middle of April or late April and things like that. And guys, okay, and they take it. And then, and then they so that lets them get a, a, a toehold on this market, guys. You, you can't let them do that anymore. But they're going to need a lot of cattle. Like I said, they've been they've been short bought partly because of the light carcasses, partly because they just haven't been buying a whole lot uh, in their in the the uh, cash market. They bought more this past week, and they bought them in, on Wednesday. Why do Packers get aggressive before Thursday and Friday? Because they're short bought and they need cattle really bad. And and I don't understand why people don't learn that. But you can hold this, these cattle. You can you can hold those Packers feet to the fire. You can get more money for these cattle. Uh, I was talking to to uh, Kevin Larson at Aberdeen Livestock Sales in Aberdeen, South Dakota. He had three loads of 1,600-pound of fat cattle. Oh, they're too big. They won't fit the box. Remember that? Nobody cares about the box when you're short on, on supplies and you need cattle. Three loads of 1,600-pound, really nice black fat steers at his sale bar in Aberdeen, South Dakota. They bid on them. They bring a buck 70. Uh, did, did it end up being a major that bought them? No. A major come in second, which is the first last place. So that that's what happens whenever these Packers get short bought. They need cattle. They're tipping their hand. I'm anxious to see what happens at Stockman's and Yankton uh, here on Tuesday. And and they need cattle, guys. That's what they need. They have to have something to hang on the hooks. Let's talk about your board to open the week on Monday. April live cattle futures are up a dollar ninety at one sixty four ninety. So that's about 50 cents better than what your weighted average was in your five very feeding region last week. So running at a premium there. No basis for jumping. Uh, June live cattle up 227 at 158.87. Your back months up 145 to up 217. Feeder cattle for March up 270 here right in the late stages of March uh, because we've seen a, a big run up here in our cash index all of a sudden. It's got a flush with that here this week. 192.35 for your spot March feeder cattle. April's a big month. It was up 282. We haven't seen these kind of gains in the board for a long time. 197.62, almost two bucks a pound on your futures market here for for short uh, future coming along your back months were up 242 to as much as 382 and that was on May contracts guys these cattle are going to the moon been telling you that let's talk about your uh, your grains May corn up five and a quarter cent closing regular trading at 648 and a quarter December up nine and a half at 569 and three quarters March beans up 14 cents. Remember, it was uh, down a bunch last week. It's gaining some of that back up. 14, 14.42 and a quarter. Weighted average on last week's negotiated direct fed cattle movement out of your five area feeding region, 68,200 head. That compares to 59,600 the previous week and 77,100 uh, the same week a year ago. But live sales of steers and heifers were higher, a uh, buck higher live basis in the northern plains, a buck lower in the southern plains. If I had good fat cattle in Kansas selling negotiated, I'd be hot to trot mad. Uh, your dress sales in the northern plains were one to two bucks higher. But live, steer, live sales steers and heifers last week ranged from 162 to 167 as a spread that was 50 cents to a dollar higher than the previous week. Your weighted average on live steers, 164.41, up 24 cents 
compared to the previous week, 24 cents a hundred. Uh, so we did see gains, even though the Southern Plains was a buck lower, because like I said, Northern Plains higher, but when's the last time you see them going opposite directions? Dress sales, 262 to 268, two to three bucks higher, and uh, your weighted average on dress steers, 265.06, that was up a dollar 24. Uh, so good gains on your dress market there. Nationwide, we sold 85,000 head negotiating in the whole entire United States. Doesn't sound like a whole lot. 25% of those were for the two to four week delivery, what I was telling you about before, uh, where they're wanting to get them with a little bit of time on them so they can kind of set this market up, fill their coffers a little bit, and not be so, uh, so uh, sensitive to, to a higher market. But 85,000 head negotiated nationwide, 47,100 negotiated grid, 22,800 head forward contract last week, and formula sales 262,000. In your, in your uh, four area weighted average, we haven't seen anything out of Colorado in so long, there's no use even looking anymore, but last week negotiated sales in Iowa added up to be 28,700 head. Nebraska 21,200 head, and they're always more than Iowa, but Kansas 12,700 is all, and Texas uh, not even 5,600 head of cattle there, you know, a decent sale barn, I have that many, out of all those feedlots in Texas selling in a negotiated manner. Box beef cutout values were higher on Monday, and a lot of people think this is going to start a higher trend and a little rally in these box beef as we get into grilling season here. But choice cuts up 48 cents at 280.36. Selects up 97 at 269.72. Your slaughter uh, to start the week out on Monday was a good healthy 125,000. So that's good. Talk about what else is going on. The Night Latch Group and Andy Cunningham are, are stressing to you guys hold on to your investment that's where the night latch comes in i think that's kind of cool with gross margin policies they've kind of figured that out how to cover your corn and your cattle risk with one policy there uh, they also sell lrps they also sell drought insurance they sell it all but they've really got these gross margin policies figured out give them a call uh, at night latch group and and talk to them about those gross margin policies and how you can protect yourself with those, plus get uh, a little bit comeback from the government there. But for more information, go to nightlatch.net. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction. Based on an 800-pound cash steer up through the middle 12 states, uh, late in the day on Monday, sitting at 189.42. That was up 55 cents just for the day on Monday. Uh, your big sales... Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City, only 6,000 head right here uh, at the 1st of May, end of March. Uh, you know, that's, that's just a, a light run for them. Feeder steers, three to five bucks higher. A few stalker steers uh, that were in that thin green condition weighing in the sixes uh, sell from 12 to $16 higher, my goodness. Steer calves steady to $4 higher. Feeder heifers were steady to a buck higher and heifer calves six to eight dollars higher. Joplin Regional Stockyards, another good run for them, 7,400 head for them. They underestimated a little bit. Feeder steers in Joplin steady to three bucks higher. Feeder heifers steady to three dollars lower. We saw that last week in a lot of markets where your, your steer trend was higher and the heifers were a little bit easier. Peewee steers uh, weighing under four or under four and a half steady to four dollars lower which is basically nothing as much as they bring two or three four five dollars that that's not anything you know that's one bid in a lot of cases how about heifer calves mostly steady stick out deal i saw in joplin was 149 steers weighed 533 at 246 be pretty impressive there your zoetta stick out sale of the day was sioux falls regional livestock in worthing south dakota DV Auction Broadcaster there. You can watch all their sales on dvauction.com. About 3,500 head, they said, for the feeder cattle auction. Market was mostly steady to five bucks higher. 
uh, instances they just called sharply higher, and it had to be on some of them stalker types there, but I mean just some uh, horrendous <laughs> trends that they call there, and I would have just called it sharply higher. But uh, you look at your best tested weights, and it was on bigger feeding cattle, 388 head, or 300, yeah, 388 head is seven weight steers, average 750, weighted average price 203.74. How about 240 head of eight weight steers in Worthing, South Dakota, that averaged 823 at 197.28. The light eight weights uh, averaged over two dollars a pound. 273 head of nine weight steers averaged 942 with a weighted average price of 179 and a quarter on some of the bigger uh, heifers uh, weight groups. 333 head of seven weight heifers averaged 741 weighted average price 182.35 and 533 head of eight weight heifers averaged 855 weighted average price 172.49 give you a few individual quotes around how about bluegrass stockyards lexington kentucky i was in that facility just last weekend uh, when i had a sale there in, in northern kentucky and it's just a cool place to be and uh wasn't a whole lot going on on a saturday afternoon that day but uh, they have they have big sales there and they do a really good job that's their flagship location and it's a beautiful facility they sell 111 head of steers weight 856 at 187.90 and that's a pretty good uh, clip right there how about Sioux Falls Regional Livestock a okay, where Zo had a stick out sale how about a stick out low to steer 63 head 801 pound steers bring 202.50 wow but the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Monday your Mackerson no BS top quote for the day come out of Sugar Valley Stockyards in Gearing, Nebraska 52 steer calves weighed 4.74 at $2.85 a pound. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.